Welcome to RenewEnergy.com, your renewable energy and sustainability platform. At RenewEnergy.com, we believe in the power of clean, sustainable energy to transform the way we Hello and welcome back to RenewEnergy.com, your essential hub for all things related to renewable energy and sustainability. If you've ever been curious about the advancements in hydrogen storage and transportation, today's episode is tailor-made for you. We're diving deep into the fascinating world of liquid organic hydrogen carriers, also known as LOHCs. What makes LOHCs so captivating? Well, these carriers have the potential to solve some of the most pressing issues in the hydrogen economy, like safe storage and cost-effective transportation. With the growing need for cleaner energy solutions, LOHCs could be a game-changer in making hydrogen a viable fuel for the future. So, let's get started on this exciting journey as we explore the landscape of LOHCs, from their types to their impact on the renewable energy sector. This is an episode you won't want to miss, so stick around. Disclaimer, the content provided in this video is for informational purposes only and should not be considered as professional advice. Now, let's dive in. What are LOHCs? Liquid Organic Hydrogen Carriers, or LOHCs, are essentially organic compounds that can chemically bind with hydrogen gas, storing it in a stable and non-toxic liquid form. This is a transformative solution to a major challenge in the hydrogen economy, safe and efficient storage and transportation. In the realm of renewable energy, LOHCs serve multiple roles. First and foremost, they make hydrogen easier to handle and transport, eliminating the need for high-pressure storage or low-temperature cooling. This, in turn, makes the hydrogen supply chain more robust and accessible. Low HCs also lend themselves well to grid-scale storage solutions, providing a way to balance intermittent renewable energy sources like wind and solar. Because they utilize existing fuel infrastructure, low HCs can fast-track the adoption of hydrogen as a mainstream, clean fuel source. So, whether we're talking about fueling cars or storing surplus energy from renewable sources, low HCs are shaping up to be an indispensable component of a more sustainable future. Criteria for assessing low HCs when it comes to assessing the viability of different liquid organic hydrogen carriers, low HCs, there are several criteria that experts consider essential. Here are some of the main factors. Efficiency, one of the foremost criteria is the efficiency of hydrogen loading and unloading from the organic carrier. The ideal low HC should be able to store a significant amount of hydrogen by weight and volume, and it should allow for easy extraction of the stored hydrogen when needed. Additionally, the conversion processes for loading and unloading hydrogen should be energy efficient to make the system commercially viable. Safety, given that one of the primary advantages of low HCs is safer storage and transportation of hydrogen, the safety profile of the organic carrier itself is a major consideration. The material should be stable, non-flammable, and ideally, non-toxic, to reduce risks associated with handling, transportation, and potential leaks. Environmental Impact this includes the sustainability of the low HC material itself, is it sourced from renewable or non-renewable resources? Furthermore, what is its environmental footprint across its life cycle? Does the low HC decompose into harmless substances, or are there environmental concerns related to its degradation? Types of low HCs In the fast-evolving field of hydrogen storage and transportation, various types of liquid organic hydrogen carriers, low HCs, have gained attention. Each has its own set of advantages and challenges. Here are some commonly used types. Toluene slash methyl cyclohexane. One of the most well-researched systems, toluene can be hydrogenated to form methyl cyclohexane, which serves as the low HC. This system has been extensively studied and is relatively efficient in terms of hydrogen storage capacity. Dibenzyl toluene. This is another popular choice due to its high thermal stability and low vapor pressure. It can safely store hydrogen and has been considered for both stationary and mobile applications. Naphthalene derivatives, these aromatic compounds have also been evaluated for their hydrogen storage capabilities, often showing promise in terms of their storage density and thermal properties. Isoquinoline, this is another organic compound that has been considered as a potential low HC. It has good hydrogen storage capacity and can be easily managed in terms of safety and environmental concerns. Hyperazine, although not as commonly used as the aforementioned compounds, piperazine and its derivatives are also being explored for their hydrogen storage potential. They offer the advantage of being less flammable than other options. Norbornadiene slash quadracyclane, this is a unique system where the hydrogenation changes not just the hydrogen content but also the shape of the molecule, making it a potential candidate for low HC applications. 
Fatty acids and esters, although not as efficient in terms of hydrogen storage capacity, these renewable organic compounds are being investigated for their potential as environmentally friendly low HCs. Each type has its own pros and cons when assessed against criteria such as efficiency, safety, and environmental impact. While some low HCs excel in storage capacity, others might be more environmentally sustainable or safer to handle. As research progresses, it's likely that new types of low HCs will emerge, and existing ones will undergo optimization to better meet the industry's needs. Life Cycle Perspective From a life cycle perspective, the assessment of liquid organic hydrogen carriers, low HCs, goes beyond just their hydrogen storage capacity or efficiency. Several other factors come into play to determine the sustainability and viability of using low HCs in renewable energy systems. Here are some key considerations. Raw Material Extraction the environmental impact of extracting the raw materials needed to produce the low HCs is crucial. For example, if the low HC is derived from fossil-based compounds, that could compromise its environmental benefits. Production energy, the energy required to synthesize the low HC and prepare it for hydrogen storage is another important criterion. Some low HCs might require complex synthesis processes that consume a lot of energy, thus reducing their net efficiency. Transportation, the environmental footprint of transporting the low HC to the location where hydrogen will be stored or released is a crucial consideration. The more dense and stable the low HC, the more cost-effective and eco-friendly the transportation. Hydrogenation slash dehydrogenation efficiency, the efficiency of the processes to load and unload hydrogen into the low HC matters a lot. Some low HCs can do this very efficiently, thus reducing wastage and increasing net efficiency. Reusability, a good low HC should be reusable many times without significant degradation in performance. This is essential for making the low HC economically viable in the long run. Safety and health, from a life cycle standpoint, the safety of handling, transporting, and storing the low HC is critical. This also includes potential toxicity and how easily any spills can be managed and cleaned. End of life, eventually, each low HC will reach the end of its functional life. How easily it can be disposed of, or better yet, recycled, is another key life cycle criterion. Regulatory compliance, low HC should meet various safety and environmental regulations, which can also vary by jurisdiction. This can impact the overall life cycle assessment, especially if certain low HCs are not compliant and therefore not usable in specific applications or countries. Cost, across all these stages, cost is a continual concern. From production to end of life, the economics of the low HC technology will play a significant role in its widespread adoption. By assessing low HCs from a cradle to grave standpoint, stakeholders can make more informed decisions about which low HC is best suited for specific applications and environments, balancing both performance and sustainability. Safety considerations. When it comes to liquid organic hydrogen carriers, low HCs, safety is a paramount concern. One of the selling points of low HC technology is its relative safety compared to storing hydrogen at high pressures or low temperatures. However, certain low HCs might have toxicity levels that require careful handling and storage. Protective gear, specialized training, and safety measures should be in place to mitigate any risks associated with handling low HCs. Energy density and efficiency. Another crucial criterion for assessing low HCs is their energy density and efficiency in storing and releasing hydrogen. Ideally, an low HC should have high volumetric and gravimetric energy density, enabling more hydrogen to be stored in a smaller space. The efficiency of the hydrogenation and dehydrogenation processes also affects the low HC's overall performance, as inefficiencies here could lead to energy losses. Environmental Aspects A holistic approach to evaluating low HCs must also consider the environmental impact. This encompasses everything from emissions during production and transport to potential impacts if the low HC were to leak into the environment. Understanding these environmental aspects can help in choosing low HCs that align better with sustainability goals. Economic factors. Cost plays an undeniable role in the scalability and adoption of any technology, low HCs included. The cost of synthesizing the low HC, the systems needed for hydrogenation and dehydrogenation, and the transportation infrastructure can all add up. Economic viability will be a significant factor for industries considering a transition to hydrogen-based energy storage and transport. Real-world applications. In the real-world scenario, low HC technology is finding applications beyond just large-scale hydrogen storage. They are increasingly being considered for applications like powering fuel cells in vehicles, grid energy storage, 
and even in niche sectors like rail transport, as demonstrated by Siemens Mobility and the Helmholtz Institute. Low HC technology offers a compelling solution to many challenges facing hydrogen storage and transport today. Its potential in revolutionizing how we think about renewable energy cannot be overstated. However, like any technology, it comes with its own set of considerations, safety, efficiency, environmental impact, and cost, that must be carefully balanced. For more information about sustainability and cleantech, make sure to visit Renee Energy's website. Let's all be a part of this exciting journey towards a more sustainable future by staying informed. Thank you for choosing ReneeEnergy.com as your go-to source for all things renewable energy and sustainability. With our YouTube channel, we explore the latest developments and innovations in the field, including hydrogen fuel cells and the use of AI and machine learning to optimize energy consumption. If you're ready to take the next step towards a cleaner, more sustainable future, visit us at ReneeEnergy.com and discover the many ways we can help you transition to renewable energy. Thank you for watching and subscribing. Stay up to date on all the latest news and insights by subscribing today.